if you learn how to fast, every yoke will be broken. Not two yokes, every yoke. Well, we've been talking about fasting. Yeah, that's right, fasting, as in not eating food but drinking water. And uh, this is the sixth, sixth message on fasting. That means we've done five before, so if you're just tuning in now, you might want to go back and uh, hit all those other five, which will lead you up to this place. We've come a long way, um, and we've touched on a lot of different aspects of fasting. So, we know, according to the scriptures, we know that we should fast. If you remember, Jesus said that when you fast... He didn't say, if you fast. If he said, if you fast, then it kind of might have been an option. But he said, no, when you fast, do it thus and so. So, he said, when you fast. So, we know we should. Jesus said, when? Well, okay. And then he goes on and tells us when. He said that when he goes, he's talking about himself as the bridegroom, or when he goes away, he said the disciples would fast in those days. Well, we know for a fact Jesus is not here right now. It, it is that day that he went away. We are in that day. And therefore, we're in the day when the disciples would be fasting. What does that mean? Part of their discipline, part of their discipleship would be fasting. Learning about fasting and practicing fasting. <clears throat> we're in that day. Now, if we look at uh, 2 Timothy and chapter 2 and verse 15, I'm just going to go quickly here today. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I've taken you through certain scriptures that show you that in our day we should be fasting. And if you study the scriptures, you would see that. As a disciple, you should be a disciple that fasts or a disciple that learns about fasting and does it right? If you don't learn about it and then do it, how can you show yourself approved unto God in that specific area? You can't. Study, right? So you got to learn about it to show thyself. So that means not only do you learn about it, but you actually do it. That doesn't mean you got to run off and do a 40-day fast, but it should be something you go, okay, I see that I need to be doing this and learning about it and getting good at it. Because you can get good at it. You can get better at fasting just like you get better at anything else. But it takes it takes instruction and it takes study and it takes application. And then you get better at it. All right? Study to show thyself approved unto God. God who? God the Holy Ghost. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Why did he have to say workman? Workman means it's work. It's not always fun. It's not always pleasant. But you have to do it. It's like work. Oh, I don't want to fast for three days. Well, it's like work. But at the end of the work, you get benefits. Remember, Jesus said that after you fast, you get the benefits. There would be open rewards. And frankly, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the open rewards that can take us on to the next level. Maybe something that's been messing us up here, holding us back. This will get us beyond it. Anyway, so we know we should fast. We know when we should fast in our day and age. Another thing, uh, the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay, so if we're going to, and then he said, if you do the things that I do, the God of peace will be with you. Well, we look at Paul and he said, in fastings often. Often? What does that mean? That means not just once. That means often he would fast. He would use it as a tool. Listen to me. It's a tool to help you get to places you can't get without it. Are you here? All right. So anyway, we know we should fast. We know when we should fast in our day. And we also know that this is a method God chose. So in Isaiah... <clears throat> I'll just turn over there quickly. Isaiah chapter 58, he says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? So God chose the fast, meaning God instituted the fast, built into your system the fast 
and the fast would do things for you. You see, he chose it. He chooses the weak things to confound the wise. The things that are not to bring to naught the things that are. He chose that method. So we know that God chose that method. It says, is not this the fast that I have chosen in Isaiah 58 verse 6 to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. So within the fast, if you learn how to fast, every yoke will be broken. Not two yokes, every yoke. Right? And he goes on to say uh, that in verse 8, that your light will break forth as the morning and your health will, will break forth, will, shall spring forth speedily. So your health will spring forth. If you learn how to fast, your health will spring forth. The, the, God chose this method for you to do it. Now we preach healing, we lay hands on people, we, we believe these things, but he's also chosen the method of fasting. What if I went through a healing line? I I'd like to just do this sometime. You know, you're going through, you're praying for people, you lay hands on somebody's head, and then God says to you, uh, this person needs a fast for three weeks. How big do you think that would go over? Not very big. I, I, I'm supposed to be healed. It said, if you fast for three weeks, you'll be healed. That's scripture. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, people wouldn't like that, but you're like, you can go down the row, oh, you need to fast three days. You need to fast ten days. I think that'd be pretty funny, actually. <clears throat> anyway, so fasting's not... So we know God chose this method. So if God chose that method, we as disciples should also choose that method, right? We don't choose some other method. We choose that method that makes us a disciple, a disciplined one. Not always easy, not always comfortable, but... We do it for the open rewards. We do it for the benefits, and there are many benefits. Hopefully, I'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 9. It says, There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did his. So here, he's talking about a rest that you could enter into where you cease from works, you, you stop. So a rest is basically you, you stop doing what you're doing and there's a rest for the people of God. And then he, verse 11 says, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. So here we go. It's work to get to that place of rest. And fasting is so much like that. It's like work to get your place, your body to the place where it shuts up, where it calms down, where it can just rest. What happens there when you enter into that rest is great things begin to happen. And when you cease from your own works, then God begins to do his work. It's his method. He chose this method. He wired it into every person whosoever will. I'm going to use an illustration here. I think it's a good one. Somebody might not like it, but, you know, whatever. Now, if you cut your finger, right? Let's just say I could do an illustration. I could cut my finger. If I cut my finger, um, it would probably bleed on stuff. Well, well what am I going to do? Most people know what to do with a cut finger, right? Do you go and rub it in dirt? No. What you do is you want to maybe run some cold water over it first, you know, get all the gunk out of it, right? And then you're going to uh, cover it up. And then you're not going to use it for a while. If I don't cover it up and I don't clean the gunk out, but I just go on about using it and poking people with it, then what's going to happen? Oh, it's going to get infected. It might get bad. It might get gangrene. <laughs> We know what to do with a finger. So if I do that, if I, if I cut my finger and then I just I run some pure clean water over it and then I put a band-aid over it, kind of like tucking it in, it's going to bed now. Now I'm not going to use it, you know. I might even put it on splint so that I don't end up using it inadvertently. But, but now what happens? It starts to heal. 
It begins healing because I took the contaminants away from it, right? And I covered it up and I'm letting it rest. Where does that healing happen? That comes from my inside. It happens on a cellular level. The cells begin, the cells themselves within the finger and the skin and the tissues begin to mend themselves. They reject any impurities that didn't get out. And as long as you keep it covered and let it rest, it will heal itself. And it'll come out looking just like new. I've cut my fingers many times. I know. The same thing happens on a cellular level in your whole physical body. The problem is we don't remove the contaminants and we don't put it to rest. We never let our body rest. <clears throat> We never let our whole, which one of our, our largest organs in our body is, is our whole in, intestinal system. And we never let it rest. And we just keep feeding it contaminants all the time. What do you mean contaminants? I mean, you know, things that shouldn't be in there. It's not really food. It just it might even taste good, but it's, it's not. And so each of those things, each of those contaminants um, uh, is like making little cuts in the cells of your body if it's if it's not supposed to be there and see what happened is way back from the beginning the fall of man the devil introduced death into the earth so death is literally in everything now it's just pervaded throughout everything so the food you eat uh, the stuff you do even if you're trying to be really good there's still a certain amount of corruption and contaminants in there and those little things that go in there and they make little cuts on your cells. I know that, you know, all oh, this is very scientific. I'm trying to make an illustration that you can understand that there's times then you order, you can't be healed of certain things unless you stop the stuff cutting it again. Your finger is never going to heal if you keep opening it up and making another cut. You open up and make another cut. Open up and make another cut. It has to have a period of time I don't know how long a finger takes to heal, usually a couple days or something, but other things take longer than that to heal. So in your intestinal tract, if, you, if it's making cuts on the inside of you, I know that doesn't sound very pleasant, but you understand it's on a cellular level. Your cells heal themselves when they're given the chance. It's the same thing with a cut finger. When you remove the contaminants, and you let it rest and you don't add any other stuff you just let it be then it heals itself psalms 139 14 says <clears throat> excuse me i am fearfully and wonderfully made god made you fearfully and wonderfully he didn't make any accidents in there. He designed you just like your finger will heal itself. Every other cell of your body will heal itself when given the chance. The same thing happens on a cellular level. Well, you think about it. How's, it, how's your finger healing on a cellular level? You got to trust that God made you in a way with the innate ability hardwired into you to heal yourself. And fasting takes faith and patience. And you got to endure some things. You got to endure the temptation not to eat. But as you do, you're putting your body to rest. And you're letting it get cleansed. You're drinking lots of pure water. And you're cleansing yourself. And now those cells are able to do what God created them to do. Are you getting this? I hope so. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the process of fasting because I haven't really talked about this yet. Uh, certain days uh, might be more difficult than other. But so if you stop eating and then the first day, over the first day, so you, you stopped eating at night, then you wake up in the morning, you got the whole first day where you're just drinking lots of water. Mmm, water. It's delicious. Mm. Well, that first day, and again, most of this stuff is, in my experience, it also is corroborated by many others who've been down this same road, but it's still just general. It applies to me. It'll apply to you to some degree. You may have more or less of any of these situations. You understand? And on the first day, I, you're hungry, 
but it's usually just a force of will. You just get through it. Okay, I'm not going to eat. I made up my mind I'm not going to eat. So, and then you go to bed hungry. And, you know, drink a glass of water. And you get up in the morning, and <clears throat> day two. My experience is I get a little bit irritable. Just things kind of annoy me. The cat annoys me. Little things annoy me. Well, I'm, I'm hungry, and, you know, I'm, I'm getting annoyed at things. <clears throat> Your stomach is complaining, especially around, you know, the dinner times. And you're like, aren't you going to feed me? No, because I'm fasting, you see, and, and now you're making me annoyed, too. Day three. You can, most people can get through day one, day, day two, just by force of will. Day three, in my opinion, is the hardest. There's more of a mental battle going on there. Do you really want to do this? Why are you doing this? This seems ridiculous. And, you know, and what you're going to find out is if you really analyze yourself, you're not really that hungry anymore. Because, you're, you know, your stomach's kind of shrunk down and you've kind of gotten beyond that. Your stomach almost knows, oh, he's not going to feed me for a while. <laughs> and you're not really that hungry, but then the times to eat show up and you're like, it's time to eat. So it's not, it's more habit hunger than actual hunger. Your, your stomach's not as hungry, but there's more of a habit. You're like, oh, it's time for me to eat. You know, when the news comes on, I usually have a sandwich in my face. So it's habit. And habits are not easily broken. It's day three. So day four through ten. Oh, you say that's a, that's a jump. But I'm, I'm combining them together because four through ten seems to kind of all, in my, in my mind, kind of goes in the same category. Because certain things begin to arise. Mild aches in your body, like back aches or, you know, a headache or something. Four through ten. doesn't have to be all the way through ten. It could go beyond ten, right? could stop way before ten. Mild aches and pains. Headaches. Weakness. Nausea. What's happening is your body is cleaning itself. The toxins are beginning to leave your body. They're being metabolized. What your body used to eat for food, now it's eating all of those things and it's burning them up and it's getting rid of them. As well as fat, burning it up and getting rid of them. And by day four, it stops burning any muscle. It spares the muscle and goes uh, towards these other things. And then I wrote down here in large letters, tongue. Well, you know, your tongue is going to turn into a beast of its own, not the words you say but it will be coated with this strange substance and it's just stuff being coming out of your tongue it's very strange and your mouth gets dry it's not very pleasant and uh, i wish i could tell you that it would be more pleasant but it's not just you be prepared for it you just deal with it right brush your teeth a lot then most people may never need to go beyond day 10 because all of those all those things may leave them and then the problem that they were looking to get delivered from just left. And that's okay, then you don't need to go beyond day 10. But if you are going beyond day 10, uh, some of the symptoms that I just talked about, the headaches, the, the aches and pains in your body, your muscles, your weakness, nausea, those kind of things, those symptoms begin, I said begin, they don't necessarily just, oh, on day 10, hmm, eh. on day 11, they just leave. No, this is over time. <clears throat> Weakness begins to leave. So where you may have been weak before, now all of a sudden you'll find yourself with a little bit more energy. Do I mean you're going to get up and run a marathon? No, you're fasting. But you probably have enough energy to go for a mild walk now. Where on maybe day four through ten, there's just no way. You're just out of it. So, weakness begins to leave. Things begin to seem to be normalized. And you go, ah, oh, this, nah, this isn't so bad. Except those times when you go, hmm, uh, you watch the Food Network or something. <clears throat> but... There may be, even in this time, uh, day 11 through 15, there will be periodic 
reoccurrences of any of the symptoms that I've mentioned just because your body's still wrestling with some kind of thing trying to get rid of it. You understand? But, day 11 through 15. Here are where the great benefits begin to happen and show up. You've kind of, your body is now, has kind of gone through a lot of that initial cleansing. Your mind begins to clear up. No more haze, that hazy thinking just kind of, just the, the haze clears. You begin to think clearly. I put this down here, never more alive. And I've said that many times when I'm fasting. I'm never more alive than when I'm fasting. And it's because you're in tune with you. You're a spirit being. And you've got your body in subjection now. Oppressions leave. Things that might have been bugging you for years. Remember, I'm talking about fasting. I'm talking about from day 11 today 15 and beyond right oppression oppressions leave things that might have been binding your head or something something has been pushing on you it, it just they just evaporate and leave it's almost miraculous you wonder what happened to it where'd that go it just left part of the benefits of fasting sometimes i put it down here i gotta say it sometimes those oppressions are people sometimes people We'll just get up and leave. And you'll be like, eh, and then you realize afterwards, well, I'm not oppressed by that anymore, right? Solutions to problems. What do you mean solutions to problems? I mean, things you've never thought of before. Could be a business problem. Could be something you've been wrestling with. Could be something you've been believing God for, but you just didn't know how to get there. And then all of a sudden, a solution that you never thought of just shows up. You don't even know where it came from. It just shows up. Sicknesses just go away and i use this word just because it's so appropriate here sicknesses it's not like you wrestled with it or anything the sick it just goes away it, it was a problem and it just went away the oppressing the oppressive thing was a problem and it just went away how does that happen it's god's chosen method he said he would openly reward you Sicknesses go away. All kinds of sicknesses. I touched a lot on that last week. I'm not going to go into it. But this is God's chosen method, and it will work for whosoever will. Not just Christians. It works for whosoever will. Those sicknesses will just leave, and they'll think it's a miracle from God. Because it is, because God chose this method and wired it into you. Things that you thought were so important to you. things. I mean, this is the most important thing I've got going on. And all of a sudden you get into this fast and you get, you know, a little bit farther into it, 11 to 15 or whatever. And then, well, that's not really that important to me anymore. What happened to it? That also just went away. You're like, oh, uh, you didn't even see it go away. It's almost like it just melted away. Almost like a fog lifting. It just, well, I thought that was really important, but that's not really that important to me anymore. Right? Temptations, carnal desires, things that really used to, oh, oh, if I could just, or, you know, I'm having a hard time thinking of something, but the people that are tempted by stuff and, and driven by things and tempted by that, or, you know, and that's almost depression after a while, but just temptations of it. It just leaves. It's like that doesn't even tempt me anymore. That doesn't even bother me anymore. It just goes away. How did it just go away? Because you just obeyed God and you just chose God's method to make that thing go away. What's happening are, is you are being refined and cleaned up for the master's use. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let's look 
at verse 20. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor, some to dishonor. Verse 21, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself. See, purge himself, meaning you've got to do, you have something to do with it. Nobody can make you fast. I can preach these messages all day, every day, and I still can't make anybody do it. You have to do it. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, prepared for every good work. In fasting, you're cleaning yourself up. You're getting rid of all of that garbage that's on the inside. And we all know you got to have your insides clean, right? And then you're prepared, you're meat, meaning you're, you're, you are acceptable for the master to use now. You know, and you got you to gotta understand that we are temples of the Holy Ghost and he doesn't want to live in a house filled with garbage. So you're being, and this is going to make you a vessel of honor. As this whole purging process is going on. As this whole purge, what are you being purged from? You're being purged from sicknesses, purged from oppressions. You're being purged from things that are holding you back. Carnal desires, stupid things you thought were the most important thing in the world. You're being purged from all of this stuff. It's not just the food stuff. It's like a total inside out cleaning and depending on you know how much junk you got in there is how long you got to go so this may or may not go on this when i talked about day 11 through 15 this may or may not go on all the way through day 21 to day 40. most people are never going to have to do a 40-day fast some may have to do a 21-day fast depending how you know what we're dealing with here. But all of those things are going to go on, the purging, the cleaning, the, the cleansing, the sanctifying, the getting you ready, getting you in the right shape so that God can use you for whatever he's got to use you for, which obviously is healing. After day, between days 21 and day 40, at some point in there, hunger will return. And when hunger returns then that's when you stop the fast. What I mean hunger returns again, well, it's a different sensation. It's something that happens in your mouth, not in your stomach, because your stomach's basically gone to sleep, and your mouth is going to start craving food, a lot like it would want some water. It. You'll know it when you get there if you're going to go, and that's what they call a complete fast, is when somebody goes until hunger returns. Let's, let's look at Luke chapter 4. Let's look at verse 2. Being forty days tempted the devil in those days, he did eat. How many things did Jesus eat in those forty days? No thing. Mm -hmm. He ate zero things. That's that's no things did he eat. See, that's a fast. If it, if it went up and said, oh, and being twenty days, he's tempted the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Well, that would be a twenty day fast where he didn't eat anything, right? And when, he, and when they were ended, when what were ended? The 40 days, he afterward hungered. That was the return of hunger. Jesus did a complete fast. Even science, uh, uh, doctors who study this say that, you know, the person, average people could go about 40 days before they're actually depleted of all the nutrients and things that they, they need to survive on before starvation occurs. You go beyond that, then you begin to starve. You're not starving up until that. You may think you are, but you're not. But anyway, hunger returned, and we see that. So after all of this, Jesus fasted 40 days, and then he was hungry. And then in verse 14, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. So Jesus went through all of his purging, all of his cleansing, all of those temptations, all of those things. He went through it all. And then afterwards, afterwards, the power came. 
See, everybody wants the power during. You wish you had the power during because maybe the power would help me fast longer. No, the power comes after the cleansing. The power comes after the fasting. Power available to you on a different level. See, because before the fast, you were on this level with all of your junk. Then you fasted and God cleaned you up and now you're able to handle power that's greater power on a different level that you couldn't handle before because you had all that junk. So he's got to clean you up first before he can send higher power through you. You see, and everybody wants, everyone wants greater power. Everyone wants greater power on a different level, but not everybody wants to pay the price. And one of which is fasting long enough until you're clean enough so that the power on a greater level can function through you. I hope that helps you. I hope that blesses you. Uh, this has been a series on fasting and these things are wonderful. If you are going to begin to fast, not if, when you do begin to fast, I would encourage you to listen to these several times over and over. They will help you. They will encourage you in your walk with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today. Be blessed. Your God.